So you know that you need to post market stats online. You post market stats online, but they don't feel like you, they don't look like you, and it looks like you just grabbed them from your brokerage's website or from your brokerage, plopped it onto your social media platform of choice and called it a day, and it really doesn't feel right. You want something that's on brand, you want something that feels good, that looks like you, but most importantly, you want something that resonates with your ideal audience. If this sounds like you, then you're in the right place. Today, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to create market stats that are on brand, visually appealing, and attract your ideal audience. Does that sound good? Before we dive in, if you have no idea who I am, my name is Melanie Gray and I help realtors master their marketing and build more impactful brands using none other than Canva. Let's dive in. So before we jump in and I walk you through how to create market stats step by step, I thought it would be a good idea to start at the beginning. And the beginning is this. Market stats are fantastic. It's a great way to share what's going on in the market with your audience. But what most realtors forget is that most people don't understand what those numbers mean. So it's up to you to explain what those numbers mean. So good market stats will explain each part of whatever it is that you're sharing to your ideal audience. So essentially what you're doing is you're interpreting that information through the lens of the people that you would like to work with. So how do the market stats affect, for example, first time home buyers? How do these market stats affect sellers in a particular area? What does it mean for them? Why should they care about what you're sharing? That's where most market stats fail to meet the mark. So what I wanna do is I wanna first show you an example of a good market stat and what we'll be creating today to share what it is that you want to accomplish when you're creating market stats that are on brand. So here is an example from one of the collections inside of our membership, the Mark Collective. And it's a very simple outline for market stats, but I wanna to draw to your attention what it does do and what it doesn't do. First of all, it doesn't have a whole bunch of numbers and things that you have to interpret and digest because on social media, especially when we are scrolling, the last thing we're going to stop on is a whole bunch of numbers. So instead of inundating them with an overview, what you want to do is space out that content so that they can slide through a carousel post and really understand what those numbers mean. So for example, here we have the average sale price. And then right here, we have an area where you would pop in, what does this mean for your specific audience? If the sale price is 1.1 million in 2024 and it was 1.6 in 2023 what does that mean for your audience the people that you want to work with so we really want to keep that in mind you can see here that we didn't inundate them with a whole bunch of information we kept their focus on one piece of information we also made sure that it was on brand that it was big and beautiful and that it was scroll stopping so anything we can do to change things up is going to work. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create something similar to this, but very, very simple using the tools right inside of Canva. So let's head over to our main page here. I put together a little color palette that we can use and recreate using that color palette. You can just swap out these colors for your own as we move on through. First thing that I like to do is to grab an image that represents the type of client that I want to work with or has a certain vibe that represents my personal brand. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab a picture from my library and pop it into my design here. And now I have this beautiful big picture. Now we have to add our market stats, but I don't want our market stats to be competing with the photo. So I'm going to add a little bit of a transparency to this photo. And then I'm going to pop in one of our brand colors behind the photo so that it can seep through and really look like it's on brand. So I'm gonna choose the darkest color here. And then we need to add a title. And this is where you wanna use your brand fonts and brand colors to really make it pop. So I'm gonna say the market. Yeah, I guess this is good. Bring that out. I'm gonna change the color to one of my lighter brand colors here. And already that's looking pretty snazzy. I wanna add some distinction here. So once we've made all the adjustments to the title of our market stats, making sure that we're using our brand colors and making sure that it's big and bold so that people know what we're talking about, I've called it the market and then I put the city Toronto. And now what we need to do is get to work on adding the information. So today we're gonna do three different pieces of information. We're gonna do average sale price, we're gonna do new listings and we're gonna do days on the market because that's generally what people care about. This might be controversial, but I don't think that every single piece of information needs to be shared every single month. If there's 
not that much of a fluctuation in the market, then I would stay away from sharing certain stats every single month and only focus on the ones that are the most important to your audience. And your audience are the people that you dream of working with, the ones that light you up inside. So if days on the market, for example, isn't an impressive stat, if it's like it's 65 days on the market, you might not want to share that with your audience unless you want to share specific information about that. Don't share information that you have nothing to say about that information. Does that make sense? So let's only share information that we really want to share with our ideal audience. So how are we going to do that? Once we've established our cover and everything's nice and good, we're going to head to the elements tab. And this is where we can have tons of fun. You can head over to the chart section. And this is one of my favorite sections. So you can either choose to build out relevant information or you can use charts, which can be really fun because you just input the information and you're good to go. So one of my favorite charts to use is this bar chart and it looks like a mess right now, but we can make any adjustments that we want to this bar chart like the colors. So let's change it to our brand colors. And then under the data section, we can add our data. So we don't need all of these bars. So we are going to remove this and this. There we go. So now we have our two relevant key pieces of information and then we can add whatever it is here. So what information do we want? Let's say it was 1 million and this is 1,500,000. And now we can remove the labels and the grid lines and the legend. And now we're just left with a accurate representation of what we wanna share. OK, so you can just pop that right in the middle. In fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do, because I want to show you a very easy way to create these market stats. But actually, I'm not going to put it in the middle because we want to do something else afterwards. OK, so let's start here and then we're going to add our labels. So we're going to press T on our keyboard and do one million average sale price. Again, we want all of these to be the right color. And just as a little trick, use your lightest brand color if I'm using my lightest brand color here in this column, then the text for this darker column will be the same color as my lighter column and vice versa. So I'm going to duplicate this. So you can right click, duplicate, or use the short code, pop it into this column. And what color is that gonna be? The darker color. And that just looks really good and cohesive and lovely. Now we just need to label it. So I'm gonna press T on my keyboard again, bring up that text box and underneath here, we're gonna put average list price. And now I said that we're gonna add some more information here. Yes, we are. We're gonna duplicate this table. We're gonna shrink it down to represent the numbers from the previous year. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to head up to the data and I'm gonna change that information to reflect last year. So let's say 998,000 and let's say this was, there we go. I forgot to put what these are. So let's just label them for what they are. Let's say this one is semi detached. And again, remember what I said about not including all the information. If your ideal audience isn't interested in condo prices, then you don't necessarily need to include condo. So we can just put semi detached here and then detached here. Let's make this one detached. That's more realistic. OK, so we have semi and detached. And then we're just going to duplicate everything. So I'm going to take these two numbers and copy it over to this section here and then reduce. Now we just need to make the information relevant. So let's put the month and the year and we might want to shrink that down and remove the bold to add some contrast between the two. OK, and that can go here. And then we are just going to duplicate this one and do month here. So now what we want to do, we've created our graphs. And now what we want to do is we want to explain this information to our audience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a square shape, bring it down here. This is completely optional. I just think it'll look pretty. So I'm going to do it and show you how to do it. We're grabbing this square shape. We're heading to the color tab. We're going to select our darkest brand color and then we're going to use a gradient to let's just switch those up 
just so that it's going to be easier to read and it draws our attention to the actual numbers. So this is completely optional. You don't have to do this. And another thing I'm going to do is move this average list price to this area here to act as a heading. And then we're going to talk about it. And then under here, again, T on my keyboard to bring up a text box. And under here, we're going to talk about how this is relevant for our particular audience. I've said that like 10 times. I'm trying to let it sink in. <laughs> I want it to sink in. Sharing market stats doesn't matter unless we contextualize it. It doesn't matter unless we explain what does this mean. If I'm a first time home buyer, it's going to mean something different for me than it's going to mean for somebody who is selling their house, for example. It's also going to mean something different for me depending on what income bracket I'm in. So when you know these demographics and psychographics of your ideal audience, it becomes far easier to explain okay, well, Kevin Smith, who I've worked with many times, he feels this way. He needs to hear this. He's interested in this. This is how I'm going to talk about it. This is what I'm going to say because it pertains to him in this particular way. This is very, very important. It's where most people miss the mark when they talk about market stats. So I'm just going to put some dummy text in here, just some lorem ipsum. And of course, we want to make that our lightest brand color. And we want to make sure that it's very easy to read. So that gradient that I added here, I'm actually going to darken the color. I'm going to cheat, which is totally fine because no one's going to know. There we go. I'm just going to darken the blue. So that's a little trick. If your brand color doesn't lend itself to this kind of effect, just darken it a bit. No one will be able to tell. It's a nice little trick. Okay. I'm having trouble reading the month year here, so I'm going to bold these. I don't like that they're hard to read. Remember, legibility is one of the most important things. So now we have a really simple template. And once you create this once, you can use it every single month, no problem, that we can now talk to our audience about. And we've displayed the market stats in our own way. That's relevant to us and our audience. Okay, so now let's duplicate this page to make it super easy. And now for the second one, to make this visually interesting, I'm not going to use the same columns. I'm going to choose a different type of chart. If you see here in Canva under charts, Canva has all of these different charts that we can use in every single section. So I'm going to use something different to show off how many new listings there are to my audience. So I'm going to use this cool line chart. In this case, when we're talking about the amount of new listings, we're going to have to use a percentage. Let's say the new listings, there were 14,000 new listings this year, and there were 20,000 new listings last year. Well, then the first one will have to be, let's say 65%. And let's reduce this line weight. It looks a little bit ugly to me. And then let's change the color. Okay, so we're going to duplicate this line graph. And I did that by right clicking duplicate. And there's a short code there. And now we need to change it. So let's say, let's just bring up the T on our keyboard so that we can all stay in the same zone here. The first one was 14,000 new listings. Change that to our brand color. And then last year was let's say 11,000. So let's change that. So now we know when we head over here, the percentage has to be less. So if that's zero, then this would be about 11,000. It's not too different, but it's different enough. Okay, so now this is your opportunity to talk about this particular market stat with your ideal audience and tell them what this means. What does this mean for sellers? What does it mean that there's 14,000 new listings and last year there was only 11? What does that mean? So let them know in this area here, use your own voice, talk about it, you're good to go. Another thing that you can do that I haven't mentioned yet is that you can also add icons. So for example, if you wanted to add an icon suggesting new listings, you could go to the elements tab and type in house icon and then take a peek at what icon looks good for you. I like this one. It's simple. It's clean. It's going with the aesthetic that we have. And then I would just pop it in here, duplicate and duplicate and then change the color. Okay, so after I've done this part, let's move on to the next one. And the last thing that we're gonna do is duplicate this page one more time. You can duplicate it as much as you want for as many market stats as you have. We're gonna delete this completely, and then we're gonna use a new chart to display days on the market. And one of my favorite ones to do this with is this guy here. I love this one. So days on the market, I am just gonna make this super big and we'll talk about the last year's days on the market underneath. So again, let's change the colors and we want to change this to days on the market and we are going to duplicate this. Remember to duplicate, all you need to do is right click duplicate. There's the short code for your keyboard. 
and I'm gonna put three right in the middle. And then in very small lettering over here off to the side, I'm gonna put year, so last year, and then four days. Okay, and when we go to grid view, how do all these look together? They look really good. Do you see how on brand this can look and how wonderfully descriptive it can be and how doing it this way allows you to speak through the market stats. Rather than just posting random market stats, you're sharing your opinions, your thoughts, and how it relates to your audience. This is how you can make market stats your own using the charts and graphs inside of Canva. You also have one last thing that I'm going to say is you can also create a cover page similar to this. If it were me, I would just do something very similar to what I have here, the Market Toronto, but just very much bigger. So really quickly duplicate that page and then delete all of this stuff and make this super duper big. And that can be enough for your cover page. So simple, simple. And now we have this beautiful infographic style market stat carousel post that you can share with your audience. And there you have it, my friends. This is how you can create beautiful market stats right inside of Canva using their charts and graphs. And if you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to share your designs, I would love to see them. I would love to see what you come up with. And of course, if you like this video, click like and subscribe to get notified of any new videos like this coming up. Speak to you soon. Happy designing.